want to welcome you guys to the ACG Cup. And thank you for presenting. Um, you have a lot of experienced individuals here on the investment committee. Um, it might be helpful if you, before we get started with the presentation, just introduce yourself more informal. Just introduce yourself, where you're from, what year you're in, uh, maybe what job you would like to have after you graduate would be helpful. I'll go ahead and start. Uh, I'm Brandon Delk. I'm actually from Greenwood. Indiana is Bloomington Kelly undergrad. Uh, I am going to be graduating my MBA here in May, so I am light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, professionally, I am an investment, uh, tax credit and investment guy. I do affordable housing development for PEDCOR Investments out of Carmel, Indiana, uh, primarily here in Indiana and uh, Oregon. Uh, Anthony Hornbach, I went to Hanover College. I'm from uh, Indianapolis originally. I'll be finishing up my MBA here in December, and uh, currently I work as a uh, corporate banking associate for PNC Bank. Mohit Muzumdar, I am originally from Mumbai, India. I'm a second-day MBA student, and uh, I would like to work in investment banking post-graduation. At present, I'm working as an operational Six Sigma black belt with Cummins Inc. in Columbus, Indiana. My name is Michael Terrell. I'm a JD MBA student here at IU in Indianapolis. I'm going to be graduating in December, and I, was, I like to get into investment banking or private equity. I've done a few internships in PE, and so that's kind of why I'm doing this, why I'm interested. My name is Noah Dennis. I am a commercial credit analyst at the National Bank of Indianapolis. I am also going to be graduating this May um, here in Indianapolis, and I'm interested also in getting into private equity. I had, didn't realize who you all have a current employment. Yeah, well, right, you want to keep evening. that as long as possible, <laughs> right? In case this is vi being uh, videoed and an employer's watching. Right? <laughs> so that's my fault. This is the evening students yes. are Sure. Yeah. If so. we increase the purse, we have no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I did the same thing, so I worked, got my MBA, so I, I know what you guys are going through. I've been there, done that. So I think it's up to you guys. Go ahead. We're ready. Okay. Welcome X Capital Partners. Uh, we are your deal team for this month. Uh, welcome to Investment Committee for February 2016. My name is Brandon. With me today, I've got, I'll start down here. We've got Noah, Mike, Mohit, and Anthony. Um, we're going to be discussing a buy side strategy for uh, a company that was actually on the street a couple weeks ago uh, for looking at an initial IPO. Um, some folks from High Quality Investment Bank approached us. Uh, looking at a buy side opportunity today. Uh, they actually were in the running for the IPO previously and it sounds like that they lost that to low cost investment bank and that that opportunity has actually since been terminated. It looks like the, the IPO market for this, the IT services industry has really fallen out. Uh, they weren't really getting the price that they were looking for so uh, they're now have uh, kind of approached high quality. High quality has approached us for a couple of opportunities that we're going to discuss today. Two of the opportunities were uh, LBO models and the third was really just a mess piece for us to look at as well. Um, so our team's going to analyze those for you. Uh, in terms of the company that was on the street, IT Group, it's a holding company. They've got two different business sectors. The first being IT uh, services based. It's 80% of the, the company's revenues. Uh, the second sector is a semiconductor business that they manufacture. This is really where the company started. Uh, they, were, they were a root, I guess a family grown business from the manufacturing sector. As the industry kind of evolved, they picked up the services. They've really grown that. They've got much higher margins, much higher growth opportunities for the IT services company. Um, and that was really the driving force behind the potential IPO that they had originally. High Quality Investment Bank has since brought us that. Uh, that's kind of the basis. They've also brought us another company, Integrate Co., which is, uh, would be a, a merger between the dog of the IT group company, so SSIT, the manufacturing company. Uh, they're looking to merge that now with Integrate, which is a value-add manufacturing company. Uh, actually looking at a project in the aerospace and defense industry, uh, something with uh, pretty high profitable margins. Uh, the company itself has best of class margins, to be honest. Uh, it's a very uh, well-established company, about a half billion dollar company uh, per our valuation. IT Group, on the other hand, is about a $1.1 billion company. 
Uh, so we've got a couple of strategies that weigh some different capital intensive uh, outlays for us as, a, as, a, as an investment group to them. Um, and a couple other strategies that may be a little more minimal, especially on the MES piece. So we're going to analyze, first of all, we're going to analyze how much capital outlay are we going to have to look at as a company, two, what are the operational risk of those strategies, and then overall, does it fit our IRR uh, targets uh, as a business. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Mike. He's going to start looking at the first LBO strategy for IT group itself. Just then, if you're looking at trailing 12 months, you just use a lower multiple versus projections, right? You, or, or vice versa, I should say. Yeah, they a lower multiple if you're looking at projections. They expressed that their their goal was to go for a 10 times multiple, and so we're anticipating that might be what we're competing with gotcha. with the other bidders. Okay. So that's a that's how we considered that. So the SS, SSIT part of the business, Brandon mentioned before, lower growth, poorer margins. It's a little more capital intensive, both in respect to the service part of the business and to a few other companies in the industry. It has, there's also an issue with purchase multiple contraction where we'd be paying 10 times for the whole business, but if we chose to divest SSIT, we'd likely only be able to receive seven times. There's also limited exit. Why is that? If you're divesting the lower margin business, Right, it's a drag on earnings. You would think your multiple would go up. No. Well, if we were just to sell the lower, mm -hmm. the SSIT, lower margin business, mm -hmm. it's not going to have the full attractiveness of IT group, so lower multiple. And if we bought it, you know, at the, at the full 10 times as a f group, IT group company. They have some initial losses with cross selling as well uh, with ah. the SSIT business, so that is an initial decline in your multiple. Yes. And further, there are not as many exit opportunities for SSIT as it requires significant investment to become standalone. It relies on the IT services as you know, its hub for the infrastructure. So you'd mainly need to look at strategic buyers. And also, as you can see, $420 million investment, that's a big chunk of our fund. And it may be inappropriate. Who's fund? Your fund? X Capital. Who's X Capital? I thought that was us. That is. We are. So it's our fund, not yours. Our fund. Your fund? We're your deal team. We're your deal team. We're your deal. You are? Yes. I didn't know we hired you already. Okay, go ahead. And so it's, an, it's a significant investment. And lastly, there's a down, and the downside RRR situation is we'll blow our threshold. And now Mohit will go over strategy number two. So the second strategy that we have at hand is uh, acquiring and merging SSIT along with Integrate. The key advantages of this uh, particular strategy lies in the, the strength of Integrate, which has a, which has a healthy, uh, healthy business, good top line growth, good, uh, good uh, gross profit margins, as we have already hinted towards. The second advantage of this particular strategy lies in uh, synergies that, we can, that can be executed or realized between cost of goods sold and SG&A. The third advantage would be uh, Project X has a good upside potential if successfully executed. Some of the key risks involved in uh, this particular strategy are there's a significant vertical integration risk by combining uh, SSIT with Integrate. Uh, it is, we, so how we, do we mitigate that risk? We, right, you guys did great, that's a risk. How do we mitigate it? Everybody sees it's a risk. There's got to be mitigants to that risk. How can we mitigate that risk? What can we do? Well, we we definitely want to make sure that the management team maybe has a track record with prior acquisitions. Okay. That's going to be a part of the further the diligence uh, when we're, we're interviewing the management team and investigating that whole part. Do you think we'd have to hire outside consultants to help with the integration, maybe? Yeah, that's Most likely. Yeah. Okay. What's your assumption in terms of the cost of that? 
We, we, I think we'd have to do a little bit more research on that. I don't, we don't have any specific numbers at this time. We assume it's free right now. <laughs> okay. So uh, the, the next few risks are uh, executing uh, multiple, multiple strategies. By that, I mean uh, Project X. At the same time, trying to realize uh, synergies would be difficult. Uh, for the management. Also, the downside IRR on uh, this particular strategy is lower than a threshold. So if executed successfully, this particular strategy has a potential for an IRR in the low 20s and a cash on a cash, on cash uh, of 2.6 times. The next strategy, uh, Noah will go over it. So the third strategy is to um, allow another party to be the primary financial sponsor in the IT group purchase. And we would have a 10 to 15 percent uh, portion of the total $580 million dollars in debt. Um, there are three moving parts to this. There's the interest rate of 10 to 13 percent, uh, the amount of debt of 10 to 15 percent, and the and how much of that interest rate would it be cash interest we'd be receiving, or would a portion of it pick payment in kind, or have you? I mean, have you thought through that? We believe it'd be a cash. We yeah. we believe it'd be a cash payment. All cash pay. Correct. Okay. And then the third piece of that is the equity kicker um, of up to five percent. We believe that for the amount of the investment that we would be making um, between fifty-eight and eighty-seven million, um, they would not give us a five percent equity stake in the, at the exit. Um, we believe that 1% was more likely, um, and on that, we would have a 13.5% IRR and a 1.7 cash on cash. Um, and that does not meet our IRR threshold. And so we decided to decline that strategy as well. And as you can tell, we- So we're not investing any money? That brings us to our sure. fourth ah, option. Got it. All right. Which but, uh, is going back to that one though. Yeah. I mean, is there an issue of the equity kicker uh, being too low? What drives the IRR down? Yeah. yeah. There, what's the indifference point? What's, yeah, that, what point do you uh, say it's it's no longer meeting our threshold? Well, the the way we looked at it was we modeled it out you know, one to five percent equity kicker. A five percent equity kicker gives you a way higher return than the lead sponsor would have on the deal, which doesn't really make sense for just contributing a small piece of mass debt and then participating that much in the upside of a billion dollar plus company. So looking at the different returns, we thought that that was the most appropriately priced for the amount of debt you invest. A sponsor, wouldn't, a sponsor would not bring on mes, a MES player who's receiving that high of equity kicker and could ultimately achieve higher returns than they could and, and in themselves for, for an equity play. you cannot negotiate a better uh, right. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that why we're hiring you guys, though, to negotiate that? Fund? We would negotiate it. We do have some, some different equity kicker uh, sensitivity analysis in there, and we could certainly do that. But if uh, we're going to find a lead sponsor that's going to be able to inject that amount of capital into such a high, uh, high growth and, honestly, a valuation of you know billion plus, it's going to be pretty difficult to be able to find that participation. Another piece of, of that was we looked at it as um, even if you could get the higher return, um, the investment is much smaller. And so the total MPV compared to the other options was much lower. Um, so on to strategy four, uh, we propose to take a minority investment in, um, acqu in acquiring Integrate and execute on Project X. Um, we believe that Integrate is a really strong company. They've got a 30% EBITDA margin. Um, the Project X has great upside um, with not a lot of downside, and the management team has, has proved a really strong record here. The structure that we propose is to purchase 49% ownership in uh, Integrate, and then also have a preferred equity um, of $50 million that would um, have a 10% dividend, um, and this would provide us with two key uh, provisions as well. On the downside, if management does not meet its projections, then we would have um, a sweetener. And we would be able to get up to 15% more in equity. Um, which would put us. Warrants? Correct. Yes, that's okay. through the warrants. And then we would also have a supermajority provision 
that would um, require a 60% um, majority to make any serious business decisions. And How many would, board seats would we get then? If we're two of the members? 10. Huh? Two of the 10. Two of the 10. So 20% even, and I, uh, 20% of the board representation, and I own 49% of the company? With yes. super majority rights provisions as well, it. protecting our interest. Missed yeah. that. Yeah. How do you get super majority rights? What does that mean? Or, sorry, super majority provisions protecting that the uh, majority shareholder, you need 60% of votes to execute on a strategy. On what strategy? On any strategy that's proposed to the board. Yeah, say acquisition. Say acquisition, yeah. capital expenditure, some, some other large project. So with that, I'll pass it on to Anthony, who's going to talk about the rest of this transaction. So when we sat down and originally uh, looked at scenario number two, when we uh, dug into it, we realized that what we actually liked most about scenario number two in and of itself was Integrate Co. And this is due to the strong core business, as Noah had uh, outlined, with historical strong performance, great margin, um, and, signi and significant cash flow uh, generation capability <coughs> with very minimal capex of only around 1% um, annually of sales, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, also, we really like the upside potential of Project X. Project X only has a one-time 22.5 million R&D cost in year one or 2016. Um, and management today is projecting uh, 10 million year two cash flow growing 10% thereafter. So on a five-year horizon, that's an 86% IRR on Project X alone. Even if only 33% of project IRR is achieved, we'd still end up with a 17.5% IRR, um, which is very, still a very, very good, a good um, IRR for a downside case. Um, and lastly, we believe this is a, a relatively straight and simple uh, execution play for us and for management. We'd be able to partner with management to execute on Project X. Um, and as compared to um, option number two, we wouldn't have to worry about any of the integration risks that were <clears throat> that were involved. Well, he talked about MPV, right? I mean, does this maximize MPV? We have not talked about MPV yet. We're looking more at the IRR, but we also do consider the investment size, the amount of capital involved, and we're going to hit on that point in a slide here afterwards. I'm eagerly awaiting. <laughs> So this, uh, the other thing that we like about this trans transaction is how we have it structured. Uh, our interests are closely aligned with the management team to execute on Project X in and of itself. Um, also, as mentioned, we will have warrants to protect our downside. And um, we are also... How do warrants protect your downside? So if... So, okay, so okay, if management... Ahead. Today, management is projecting $10 million in year one and 10% growth thereafter in, ca in cash flow. So yeah. 2017 and beyond. If they do not hit 100% of what they're projecting today, we, are, um, we will receive 7.5% of the common stock equity will transfer to us on the, on, via so the warrant. they don't meet their projections, uh, so they're below budget, which would imply they're underperforming. Correct. If they're underperforming on, on, what, they, on what we know today, um, we receive 7.5%. If, if that falls further um, to below 66% of achievement, we will receive 15% equity kicker. So that, will pr that, that conversion to common stock will protect us on the downside. And also another piece of this that we're going to try to negotiate is a put option as well. And the put option would allow us to put our preferred equity back to the company and say, say in year 17, for example, if, if the project is not generating any cash flow at all, our expected um, Debt capacity at that time be roughly 240 to 280 million dollars. If there's no cash flow, how? No, just just on Project X. I'm just talking about Project X. They can't service the core. Debt. The core business, the core business of Integrate would still be performing. So I'm mm. just on the EBITDA of the core business would have the debt capacity to service 280 million in debt, and with that 200 million, million and 280 million in debt, we could recapitalize the company, receive our preferred equity share back um, at that time in 2017. Um, so also, so when we sat down, we looked at the, sat down and considered this option, we looked at the uh, transa transaction, transaction risk as well as um, uh, some of the strategic risk as well. Um, as mentioned, there's, uh, it's a lower liquidity event for the ownership team currently, um, but we believe that with, um, with their common stock equity at 50%, if they hit the projections, they have a much larger upside. So we believe that we'd be able to sell that to them and they would want to uh, um, execute or uh, deal, with, deal with the firm. 
Um, the other risk of, yeah. go ahead. One minute. He's oh, ready. sorry. Okay, so the other risk is, uh, as mentioned, we have 50, less than 50% ownership, uh, but due to the supermajority clauses and potential put option, we would, could be uh, protected um, in uh, negotiations and decisions. And, last, and lastly, um, as mentioned, Project X may, may <coughs> underperform, but we believe we are providing enough incentive to the management team to execute on the strategy. So just very quickly, uh, as a summary, we've got a slide here that kind of overlays what your capital outlay is, uh, a risk analysis, and then also your IRR and cash on cash returns. Uh, our last slide is, is to, to project that uh, the next step here would be to go into due diligence to further vet Project X and the management team to ensure that they can carry this project out for us, um, and then also order a quality of earnings statement to make sure that, uh, that, that we're square from uh, day one. So thank you. Yeah, what was the MPV then? Yeah, so the way we kind of consider MVP or that concept is the investment amount with the IRR. We're receiving, the main reason we chose the strategy for is you receive about the same IRR as moving strategy to and um, without spending as it's much. MPV, the, so your MPV will only, basically your MPV will tell you correct if your, pro, if your project is positive or negative, correct? Based on your hurdle rate. So we're calculating our hurdle rate of 21% because your hurdle rate for the investors, your LPs, is 18 to 22%, correct? So if you have an IRR of 21%, that guarantees that your MPV would be positive on the project. The first one, what about the first one? It looked, should be pretty good, right? I mean, the MPV wise. The, yeah, and the reason, yeah. We, the reason we decided not to go with that is we think for, for your fund, that might be too big of, a, in, of an investment in one yeah, transaction specifically, and it might be better to diversify. Uh, in the event of a downside scenario. All the downside scenarios are also in the appendices as well, so there's some, uh, there's some sensitivity analysis there. and We've got a model that can actually show you exactly what would happen in that downside anal analysis per strategy. Good. Great. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.